Good morning, Oaklawn. As we enter into this Advent season today, I invite you to listen for the Word of God from the Gospel according to Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. In those days after the suffering of that time, the sun will become dark and the moon won't give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then they will see the human one coming in the clouds with great power and splendor. Then he will send the angels and gather together his chosen people from the four corners of the earth from the end of the earth to the end of the heaven. Learn this parable from the fig tree. After its branch becomes tender and it sprouts new leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that he's near, at the door. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. But nobody knows when the day or the hour will come. Not the angels in heaven and not the sun. Only the Father knows. Watch out. Stay alert. You don't know when the time is coming. It is as if someone took a trip, left the household behind, and put the servants in charge, giving each one a job to do, and told the doorkeeper to stay alert. Therefore, stay alert. You don't know when the head of the household will come, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the early morning at daybreak. Don't let him show up when you weren't expecting and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, stay alert. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, as we begin this Advent season, I think that Advent can be a real gift if we frame it in some new ways. Honestly, between the pandemic and the election, and all of their death-dealing offspring. Many people are on high alert. Anxiety is heightened and that has been for some time. Throughout this era, there have been expectations to maintain the same pace or even an increased pace under absolutely exhausting and devastating conditions. Keeping awake in the most physical sense is for many people a wearying challenge. We are living in a time of wired but weary, awake but exhausted, hyper aware and overextended. Our Advent this year, we will use some poetry from Maya Angelou to accompany us. And this week, our Angelou reading is one called A Plagued Journey. I think it's one you will hear and resonate with, given the times that we are in. While in many ways this expectation and experience to keep pushing under unreasonable conditions can feel like a plagued journey. Under a pandemic, under the rise of reactionary white supremacist militias and movements, and all the while Collectively, we struggle with how to do basic things. I mean, how to parent, how to educate, to socialize, how to holiday, as we've all just experienced a very different Thanksgiving than we probably normally do. How to connect, how to worship, how to complete daily ordinary tasks and meet ordinary human needs in a pandemic context that we've never worked through before. All while enduring a presidency where human life is and has been treated carelessly and cruelly. 
So in a little while, you will hear this poem, A Plagued Journey. And I invite you to let it speak to you. Let it resonate in you in the week to come. I think it's important to recognize that simply people are tired, bone tired, body tired, soul tired. We are weary. Anyone who isn't tired or hasn't been must either be a saint who has somehow managed to unlock the secrets of heavenly peace in the midst of destruction or maybe who is so privileged and disconnected from the struggles that surround that maybe repentance is in order. The level of care and concern this era calls for, even on its own, is exhausting. So in our text today, when we hear Jesus say, keep awake, like a doorkeeper, commanded to be on the ready and to be waiting for the return of the one who has enslaved him. Keep awake, for you don't know when the master of the house will come in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn, or else you may find yourself asleep when he comes suddenly. (laughs) There are different ways to interpret this in our context and we must be careful paying attention to how living in an overextended culture already makes it difficult to value and practice rest. Paying attention to the systems that force some to practice an exhausting and constant vigilance for fear of being found asleep by those with power. Paying attention to how we live in a time where very little ever stops ever turns off or even moves slow. Paying attention to what this does to us in body, mind, and spirit. And who is expected, commanded, even demanded to do the labor necessary to keep everything awake 24 hours a day? What does it mean to keep awake? this Advent season? Are we to stay in a hypervigilant state all the time? Are we meant to live with constant attention to uncertainties and unknowns in a way that keeps us from ever being able to rest? Is Advent a time of unbridled urgency demanding a state of alertness shaped by 24-hour news cycles and internet immediacy. Many of us are living exactly this way, worried about what could happen if the rest that we really so desperately need sneaks up on us. What happens if we disconnect even for a minute? Stressed about everything beyond our control, hypervigilant about who to trust, impatient, perhaps with great hope for what can become, impatient in every understandable way with so much loss and grief, impatiently attentive to the question of when the old ways will end and the new ways begin, praying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? wired and weary, keeping awake to everything all the time. This is the pace of our culture, of the internet, of anxiety and white supremacy, of what the challenges of this time are asking and demanding of us. Healthcare workers are just one of many essential employees pushed to the max right now. The Atlantic reports, for many healthcare workers, the toll of the pandemic goes beyond physical exhaustion. COVID-19 has eaten away at the emotional core of their work. To be a nurse, you really have to care about people, Neville said. 
But when an ICU is packed with COVID-19 patients, most of whom are likely to die, to protect yourself, you just shut down. You get to that point when you realize that you've become a machine. There's only so many bags you can zip. And so reading these kind of stories, looking around and seeing the exhaustion in your faces. I've been asking myself, what does it mean to preach? Keep awake. As if it's a message of good news when the world is so weary. This Advent season, when everything and everyone is a bit more sleep deprived, overworked, under rested, and anxious for honest to God good reason, how are we being invited to push back against all that is forcing people to keep awake, well past what is reasonable and survivable? Can we practice preparedness, noticing, and paying attention? A practice of not getting distracted or enticed in the wrong direction, in a way that resists destructive exhaustion and supports those pushed into it. A different kind of being awake. Can we practice collective solidarity that is not a restless hypervigilance? What systems and powers and norms dictate our ability to engage in a healthy pace of life? And how does holding loss, struggle, and anxiety in community help us to pace ourselves through eras of injustice and oppression? Friends, I think we are reminded in this text there is no way to know. Will justice come next week? 10 years from now? Never. Will climate catastrophe be the end of this era or will people rise up and turn things around? There are indicators, signs, symbols, that help us get a vague sense of what's possible today. But that vague sense is not fact. Still, we don't know for sure when about much of anything that is divine, do we? And so this Advent, I want us to pace ourselves, to take a deep breath and to not be distracted so that we do not miss the chance to bring about God's future. Pay attention to those around you who are suffering, who need rest, who need a break. Pay attention to what God's dreams are for God's future so that we are here to be a part of it, so that we can show up for each other so that we can move to a rhythm of a more life-giving way. And if we have the privilege of rest along the way, we labor faithfully for a world where rest is not a luxury, but an ordinary right for every creature and creation, most especially for those who too long have been told to keep awake through eras that exhaust. Friends, this is my prayer for us as we enter into this Advent season. Let us pray. Oh God, you are faithful to us. We hear the groans of your people who are weary in body and in spirit. Loss, grief, and isolation fill us with exhaustion, O oh God. 
they wear down the soul, where there are ways that we can be better at caring for ourselves or others, enable us to make it so. Where we are doing all there is to do and still it is difficult, O oh God, sustain us day by day. May your presence abide until a new dawn breaks through. Amen.